Within this video, I'll be revealing a complete model response to a 10 mark discuss question. Let's check it out. This question requires candidates to discuss the value of Mark having access to a credit card, and it's worth 10 marks. Being a discuss question, candidates are expected to write a written debate backed up by selected evidence to make a case for and against an argument, or point out the advantages and disadvantages. The response should include a conclusion, or a recommendation, that is fully and logically supported. Let's have a look at the first paragraph. Having a credit card gives Mark a degree of flexibility with regards to when he chooses to make repayments. As long as he makes minimum repayments, then Mark does not have to pay a specific amount back each month like he would do with a loan, for example. This gives Mark a significant amount of control over how much he pays back to the credit card provider each month. In months that Mark has a budgetary surplus, he may wish to pay more back. However, when in deficit, Mark may choose just to make the minimum repayment. This means he can tailor his repayments, to an extent, to external factors that affect his cash flow. On the other hand, if Mark only makes the minimum repayments on his credit card debt, then it would take a significant amount of time to pay off. This would put pressure on his cash flow for a long time into the future. Whereas with a loan, there is a defined payment schedule, so borrowers know exactly when their debt will be paid off. Credit cards have no such defined schedule, and therefore borrowers can find themselves in debt for a much longer amount of time. As Mark has never been good at following a budget, this would suggest he would benefit from a clearer payment schedule, rather than the flexibility of a credit card. Credit cards offer borrowers an interest-free period. As long as Mark pays off anything he has spent in 56 days or less, the credit card provider would not charge him any interest on his borrowing. To many people, this is an attractive proposition, as individuals can prove their credit worthiness by spending on credit cards and therefore boosting their credit score, whilst also potentially benefiting from incentives such as cashback if offered by the lender. This may mean that Mark may have received money back on qualifying purchases in cashback. This would have improved his financial position in comparison to paying with conventional methods of payment, e.g. cash. This point may be of minimal importance, however, as the interest on Mark's £11,000 of credit card debt is likely to be significantly higher than any cashback he may have received. However, as Mark has not been able to pay his credit card balance off in 56 days or less, the minimum repayments on his credit card are £220 per month. This equates to 2% of his £11,000 outstanding balance. As Mark earns £20,000 per annum, we can assume that a minimum repayment of £220 per month would put significant pressure on his cash flow. This is reflected in the case study where it was found that Mark's surplus was just £30 a month after all his current expenditure, including his current loan repayments and minimum payments on his credit card. This means that Mark has not benefited to a large extent from the 56-day interest-free period. Let's look at the conclusion then. In conclusion, Mark may have benefited in the short term from having a credit card. He may well have been able to make purchases he otherwise would not have been able to afford. He was also able to use his credit card to pay for his bills and discretionary expenditure, whilst he used the money in his current account to pay for his gambling. However, in the long term, because Mark failed to make substantial payments to clear the debt he was accruing on his credit card, the amount he owes to the lender has become almost unmanageable. We can assume this is causing Mark significant stress, which added to his gambling issues, which may well lead to depression. 
I recommend that Mark creates a budget to identify when he is likely to have a surplus, which he can then put towards paying down his credit card balance. However, he must realise that this will not be a quick process if his income and expenditure remains largely the same. Alternatively, he may wish to consider looking for a balanced transfer deal. This would mean Mark could benefit from a period of 0% interest, so the payment makes to the credit card provider go directly to paying off the balance, rather than to paying interest. Like and subscribe if you found this video useful, and also hit that bell icon to be notified when the 7th and 8th instalments of this series are released. The next instalment will be looking at a 15 mark question.